The main character is hired to fix up a rowdy bar but finds out things are more complicated than they seem. So it feels like you've heard this story before. You have. It's a remake of the 1989 movie. Roadhouse is back, this time as a remake of the 1989 classic. Brace yourself for a wild ride. The action is as thick as the plot. Here, Jake Gyllenhaal, an ex-UFC fighter, steps into the shoes of a bouncer trying to turn his life around. Stick around as we uncover the Easter eggs of the movie together. Trust me, you love the fun. Let's dive into it. In the poster of the new Roadhouse, Jake Gyllenhaal is looking for a bit worse for wear sitting in what seems to be a roadhouse. Check it out, there's an R rating slapped on the poster with the tagline, Take it outside. But here's where it gets interesting. If you take a closer look at the background, you'll spot some cool easter eggs paying tribute to the original Roadhouse movie. Like, remember that scene where they changed some graffiti with a sharpie to advertise a Buick? Well, they've snuck that detail onto the poster. And see that be nice light? It's a sign of the rules Patrick Swayze's character had in the original movie. Plus, there's a sign with three simple rules plastered on it, just like in the first film. Ooh, with that cooler in the back? It's a subtle reference to Dalton, the philosophy grad turned bouncer also known as a cooler. So even in the poster, they're giving a shout out to the classic. Guess what? This Roadhouse remake has even more layers. So in the original 1989 film, there's this monster truck called Bigfoot No. 7 that wrecks a car dealership. And in the reboot's poster, they've snuck in an image of that same monster truck. Ooh, and there's a super subtle Easter egg too. A glass with a double deuce logo. That's a nod to the original movie's bar. Talk about attention to detail. Now let's talk about this reboot. Amazon's calling it an adrenaline-fueled reimagining of the 80s cult classic, and Jake Gyllenhaal's taking on the lead role as Dalton. Doug Lehman is directing the film with a screenplay by Anthony Becker-Rosie and Chuck Mondry. Plus, we've got a real-life UFC fighter Conor McGregor making his big-screen debut alongside Gyllenhaal. McGregor even split the beans to the Daily Mail about working with Gyllenhaal, saying he's a great man and very patient and helpful. Man, with all this talent behind it, this reboot's shaping up to be something special. In the new Roadhouse movie, there are a lot of similarities to the original. Both main characters, played by Patrick Swayze and Jake Gyllenhaal, share a bunch of traits. They both love coffee, have anger issues, and are trying to move on from their past. Plus, they're both pretty good at patching themselves up after fights. And they both get friendly with the local doctor, Kelly Lynch in the old one, and Daniela Melchior in the new version. But here's the real thing. They both say that famous line from the movie, No one ever wins in a fight. Some things just never change, no matter how many times you hit the reset button. So let's talk about the main guy, Elwood Dalton. Yep, he's got the same last name as Patrick Swayze's character. But here's a twist. His first name seems like a nod to the Blues Brothers, with their names being Jake and Elwood. Pretty cool, right? Played by the seriously buff Jake Gyllenhaal, this Elwood is a former UFC champ whose career took a dark turn when he accidentally killed an opponent in the ring. Now he's hanging out in the shady world of underground bare knuckle boxing, scaring off opponents just with his reputation alone. Sounds like a pretty intense setup, huh? You'd think we're in for some serious redemption arc, right? Well, not quite. This Elwood is anything but brooding or damaged. He's all chill and laid back, cracking jokes and flashing a grin like he hasn't got a care in the world. Honestly, he's more like a smooth-talking charmer than a tough guy. His dark past? It's hardly noticeable at all. So while it seems like we're in for a gritty hero in need of redemption, we end up with a guy who's more Jack Reacher than a rough-and-tumble drifter. In contrast to the original Roadhouse, known for its over-the-top 80s style and chaotic barroom brawls, the new version takes a scenic route. Instead of a sweaty honky-tonk, think of a waterfront bar surrounded by boats and even a hungry crocodile thrown into the mix. It's a whole new vibe. But that's not all that's different. While the original focused on bar fights, the reboot dives into mixed martial arts and UFC. Jake Gyllenhaal's character Dalton goes from dominating the octagon to handling rowdy patrons in a laid-back tavern setting. And keep an eye out for nods to the original like the double deuce sneaked into the new film as an easter egg. It's a fresh take on a classic story. Alright, let's dive into the story. So there's this character Frankie, played by Jessica Williams, who owns a bar down in Florida Keys. 
And let me tell you, her bar has been dealing with some serious chaos, brawls, bottles flying everywhere, you name it, it's a mess. So she tracks down her main guy, Elwood Dalton, and hires him to clean up the place. She doesn't spill the beans about what's going on. Turns out, her bar is smack dab in the middle of where this jerk named Brant, played by Billy Magnuson, wants to build a fancy hotel. Classic evil property developer move, right? He even has one of those model dioramas to prove it. So this guy, Ben Brandt, has big plans for the land where the roadhouse sits. He wants to redo the whole coastline. But when he sees how easily Dalton handles his goons, he knows he needs to up his game. That's when he brings in Knox, played by Conor McGregor. Now, McGregor is known for his MMA skills, but his acting debut here isn't exactly a knockout. Knox comes off as a one-dimensional psycho, and McGregor's performance doesn't do much to change that. It's a bit of a letdown, and it just adds to the movie's problems. It's kind of weird seeing Jake Gyllenhaal as a calm one in a sea of over-the-top performances, especially since he's no stranger to going big in his roles. Remember Velvet Buzzsaw? But here, surrounded by blues musicians, bare-knuckle boxers, and bratty big shots, he's like the lone voice of reason. I mean, in this movie, he gets tossed into a river, run over by a car, and even hit by a freaking train, all within 40 minutes, and he just dusts himself off like it's no big deal. To be frank, it's a bit puzzling if you ask me. Now, this is where things get interesting. In the original movie, the bar was kind of on the sidelines, not central to the plot. But in the new version, they fixed that up nicely. The problem is, is that they end up creating a bunch of other issues along the way. Like for starters, Frankie's bar is in your typical roadhouse. Nope, it's the swanky beach bar with killer ocean views. And get this, she claims it's called the roadhouse as a joke. So confusing. Ooh, and here's another head scratcher. Despite all the chaos, Frankie's bar looks pristine. I'm talking immaculate. But it's made of wood and palm leaves with liquor bottles everywhere. It's a massive fire is just waiting to ignite. And yet it takes Brandt ages to even think about setting the place ablaze. Man, talk about a plot twist. Looks like Frankie's got her work cut out for her trying to keep the bar standing. You know when you're watching a fun action movie like Roadhouse, you're not expecting everything to make perfect sense, right? But as the movie goes on at its own pace, all these little things that don't quite fit together start adding up. Like there's this doctor named Ellie who starts off scolding the main guy Dalton for being too violent, but then she's suddenly into him. And then there's her whole thing with her dad who's a crooked sheriff, they bring it up but it doesn't go anywhere. And don't even get me started on this big tough henchman named Knox. He's introduced in this super flashy way, but when he finally gets into a fight, it's kind of a letdown. It's like the movie built him up too much. Watching this movie feels like being in a brainstorming session where everyone throws out ideas, but nothing gets fully developed. They try a boat chase, a car crash, and even adding some bar stuff for the main guy to mentor, but nothing sticks. And even the action scenes don't quite hit the mark, especially compared to the original Roadhouse. Sure. There are some fun moments and Jake Gyllenhaal brings his charm, but the movie feels messy. It's hard to figure out why it was made or what tone they were going for. Like the first movie, it's a guilty pleasure, but it's not as enjoyable as it could be. As we close the curtains in our roadhouse adventure, let's not overlook the cleverly planted Easter eggs sprinkled throughout the film. These hidden gems pay homage to the original while adding an extra layer of intrigue for eagle-eyed viewers. But the fun doesn't stop here. Dive deeper into the world of cinema with our channel. Subscribe now to uncover more Easter eggs, dissect your favorite movies, and stay tuned for exclusive content you won't want to miss. Hit that subscribe button and join us for more movie magic. Thanks for tuning in.